That's right, it's finally happening. Elden Ring is getting its big DLC. Shadow of the Earth Tree finally has a release date. It has a trailer and we have an interview with Miyazaki in Eurogamer that we're going to break down for you today. Hey everybody, I'm Bobby here with Direct Gaming and we are going to talk about Shadow of the Earth Tree, what it means for you as an Elden Ring enjoyer and when we can expect to see it and all sorts of juicy details that we got from this Eurogamer interview, including boss fights and weapons and stuff like that. So if you're brand new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed this video and leave a like, it's a great way to help out the channel. If you don't enjoy this video, leave a dislike and let us know in the comments what we can do better for next time. So Elden Ring's Shadow of the Earth Tree DLC was revealed last year and everybody has been waiting anxiously like when is this thing going to come out it's been about a year i remember hearing last month hey it's been a year we haven't really heard anything on shadow of the earth tree but now finally last night basically they came out we're like oh hey by the way the trailer drops tomorrow so hype has been building the trailer came out and man it is looking fantastic everything you wanted from an elden ring dlc looks like it's here including crucible night wings which just people lost their mind over on twitter going like, we finally got it. It's super hyped to see this kind of stuff. Now there's all sorts of really, really great looking additions. One of the biggest things for me is kind of maybe learning more about Mikola. I think that's gonna be really cool because the lore of this game is really rad, right? And Mika, Mikola, I feel like was completely underutilized. And I kind of felt like, yeah, there's probably gonna be something where down the line we get more insight into who Mikola was and stuff like that in a more direct way outside of like the lore that we saw. So this trailer really kind of like starts opening up on that cocoon that Mikola was left in. If you, you know, you got to the palace of blood and did all that, which I assume you did. Now the details of this get really, really juicy because we see a lot of environments. I remember looking at this trailer right when I first saw it going like, mm, I don't recognize a lot of this stuff. It looks like almost completely new. And we find out why in this interview with Miyazaki in Eurogamer, right? Where he talks about how there's gonna be a brand new area. This is all brand new and it's called the Realm of Shadow. And this Realm of Shadow is going to be accessed through a withered arm, apparently. So my assumption is we're gonna go back to the Palace of Blood, we'll find Mikola's cocoon and we'll reach out to it. And maybe it grabs us and transports us to this new realm. So we're gonna go bit by bit to this interview too to give you guys more details on what's happening. Miyazaki was first asked about whether or not George R.R. Martin contributed to Shadow of the Erd Tree and he basically said, yeah, as for George Martin's involvement, essentially it's the same as it was in the base game. The DLC Shadow of the Erd Tree is based on one part of the original mythos that he penned for us. It's not brand new mythos that he's written specifically for Shadow of the Erd Tree. He's not created something new, which informed the design of the DLC. It's simply another part of the original story that we thought fit to tell as a new expansion. Right. And I think that's kind of cool. They're just using that original like story idea. So this isn't something that they just made up. Right. The, the, all of this was originally in that world that Miyazaki and George R. R. Martin like created together. And if you hear this and you're looking at this trailer, you see like, yeah, it does feel like a natural extension of everything. Right. We see that, hey, there is this new realm, but it very much feels like it would be an offshoot of the the uh, the lands between. Now, uh, when asked what can we expect from Shadow of the Earth Tree, uh, he does say it takes place in a brand new area of a brand new map, which includes a similar structure to the original game, field areas, legacy dungeons, and other dungeons of varying scale, which is very cool. Like the legacy dungeons, please, like Zelda team, next game, like your Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom thing is awesome, but like you need these level of dungeons like zelda players are getting older right like me like i want that in zelda the the elden ring style legacy dungeons that will take me like three hours to get through i want that that's that's awesome and i love the legacy dungeons in elden ring for that reason the interview goes on to say in terms of pure surface area you could think of something larger even than limgrave in the base game and limgrave is one of the bigger areas in the game so hearing that means we're gonna get a pretty sizable new map to play around on and explore i guarantee there's gonna be tons of secrets the internet's gonna go crazy with stuff for a few days from soft has also developed 
its approach to field design, previously uh, the divide between field and dungeon areas was quite distinct, and that is very true. Miyazaki says, this time we wanted to go more in depth and bring denser and richer level design, which brings these types of layouts together a little more seamlessly. There, of course, will be large open areas, and there, of course, will be legacy dungeons, but we've also experimented with something a little more in between these as well to bring a more diverse gameplay experience, which I think is going to be cool. That is one of the things that felt a little weird. The legacy dungeons all being a real offshoot, like a very distinct offshoot of the main world. Kind of felt strange, but I get it. Like, uh, think of Volcano Manor. Right? You, you have to get through Volcano Manor, either teleporting there or you can um, go through the actual manor itself to get through like the, the get into the legacy dungeon underneath. But the reason there's all those little like narrow hallways, if you get there, like opening it through the, the secret passage, that is kind of like used to kind of filter you through and, and probably act like a loading area. Right, which is very, very clever, very clever design. Um, like God of War does that same thing, right? where they kind of funnel you through narrow areas to make sure that you are giving the, or giving the game time to load, right? So furthermore, the interview continues, there will be over 10 new boss fights, plus plenty of new weapons, equipment, and skills to find, and eight new weapon categories have been added to account for new weapon types. I think that's very interesting. Expansions from previous uh, from soft games are notorious for upping the difficulty. Bloodborne's is the old hunters, especially. Miyazaki stated Shadow of the Earth Tree will be on a similar footing to the end game of Elden Ring, though the general approach to challenge has not changed. I think that's good. Um, Elden Ring was so widely adopted because it was much more accessible than a lot of the other From Soft games. And I think if they want to continue that, that's going to be a good thing just for them as a company to get more sales, right? They go, hey, yeah, if you thought the end of Elden Ring was was a good challenge, we're not gonna make it too much harder than that, right? Because we want you to feel like you can come back and it's not gonna be crazy hard. It's a good way to get sales on these things. Uh, Miyazaki says, we wanted to provide these challenging encounters and these menacing threats. And in order to do that, we wanted to give the player a lot of freedom of approach. We wanted them to feel free in how they choose and when they choose to approach and tackle these hardships. And that's one of the good things about Elden Ring. And that's one of the things that I appreciate about, you know, the new Zelda games as well is just the freedom of just being able to just go where you want and do what you want. Right. So. Seeing this is a huge, huge win, and it kind of tells us, hey, they're following the same design philosophy that they did with the base game. They're not trying to take it back to the kind of the older things where you're kind of a little more restricted, right? Miyazaki specifically mentioned the infamous Millennia boss fight, an extremely tough yet optional battle. So players who look for that sort of challenge in our games will find a challenge on equal footing in the DLC as well. So if you got to like Millennia and you're able to beat her, sounds like those boss fights are going to be about as hard as Millennia which is great because if you're playing this, you're probably someone who's played for, excuse me, hundreds of hours. And in those hundreds of hours, you got a lot of experience playing the game. So if you've got this kind of thing to play with and feel like you've got that challenge on that same kind of, you know, plane of difficulty, you're going to have a good time, right? A new element of progression unique to the DLC has also been implemented, which further heightens player freedom to walk away, level up and come back later. And that's another great thing. Like I said before, one of the things that made this game so successful is that it was accessible. A lot of people who might not like the old FromSoft games because they're too difficult can go away, really get like overpowered and then come back and make the challenge much easier for themselves. Like I'm one of those people, right? I was never that great at the old FromSoft games. Played Bloodborne back in the day, and, you know, got my ass kicked. But here, you know, in Elden Ring, if I need to, I can go level up, get five or 10 levels, see if I can put them into an important stat that's gonna help me out and then come back and beat that boss later. All right, now judging from the trailer, as many suspected, Shadow of the Earth Tree will follow the story of Mikola, Melania's brother. Uh, I presume you two are keen to know just what kind Mikola is, uh, are keen to know just what kind Mikola is doing here. And that's from the narrator in the trailer. And it's looking just like really great. Uh, there's also mention of a realm, of the realm of shadow access through a withered arm which I think that is going to be Mikola reaching out and grabbing you and transporting you to this. Furthermore, we see a variety of new environments, haunted grasslands, that's a, that kind of cemetery with like ghost gravestones, fiery caverns, mystical ruins, as well as some magnificent new bosses. Yeah, the bosses and like the creatures in this trailer look phenomenal, like absolutely phenomenal. And I cannot wait 
<laughs> of course, the interviewer says, of course, I had to ask Miyazaki if Shadow of the Earth Tree will once again include a poison swamp. And Miyazaki says, in a word, yes. But this is actually a point of introspection for me after creating the base game. It was only after creating it that I realized I really like to create poison swamps. And this was a little place of introspection and reflection for me. So maybe when players reach the poison swamp in the DLC, they will feel a little bit of this retrospection. So it sounds like Miyazaki discovered something about himself, uh, making another poison swamp for people to just get lost in and, and get messed up by. Uh, Shadow of the Earth Tree is gonna come out on June 21st. It's it's giving Horizon uh, Forbidden West Complete Edition a three month you know leeway. So hopefully that game will actually get its own you know <laughs> its own release time without being hindered by some other giant game coming out uh happened the first horizon and the second one i still think it's a great game but shadow of the urge is absolutely looking to be legendary in terms of its scope and scale uh elden ring you know it deservedly won game of the year 2022 and people have been waiting a long time for this dlc i'm looking forward to it as someone who didn't think it was all that at first you know kind of later I, I did warm up to it i ended up getting the platinum on playstation and going you know what this game is very good it does deserve game of the year i get it right the old frank reynolds i get it meme uh one of those uh games that really for a lot of people means a lot and i think this dlc is gonna be the same deal it's gonna come out and people are gonna be like oh my god i forgot just elden ring i love it so much and I'm hoping it really does deliver for people. It's going to be about $40 US. There's also a collector's edition. If you're in the US, $250. You have to buy that from Bandai Namco, their website. Uh, it looks great. I would. Buy, I, can't, I can't get any more collector's edition of stuff. I just don't have room. Once they add more shelves, then I'd have to buy more shelves. Then my walls would look even more insane than they do now. I'll have to think about it. But overall, Shadow of the Earth Tree is looking phenomenal and i think that we should feel lucky that we have a company like from software that does take their time does put in that work for players to make a great experience and even though this took two years it's looking like it was absolutely worth the wait so make sure on june 21st if you're an elden ring fan that you are ready for shadow of the earth tree and hey if you enjoyed this video and this breakdown Again, feel free to leave a like, and if you're new here, subscribe. It would help us out, and we'd love to talk video games and, and what's going on with them. I'm Little Bobby here for Direct Gaming. Thank you once again for watching, and we hope to see you soon.